Welcome to the UCL Center for Anesthesia podcast series. In this podcast, we will discuss the preparation necessary to conduct a cardiopulmonary exercise test. After listening to this podcast, you will know why these preparatory steps are important, how to calibrate the equipment, and what pretest paperwork, information, and measurements are recorded. Preparing for the test is necessary in order to give credibility and significance to the values collected. The pretest paperwork, information, and measurements allow us to understand and report the patient as a whole back to the team of doctors. Calibrating the equipment makes the values we collect trustworthy. The gas analyzer should be switched on one hour before its intended use. The three things we calibrate for before beginning a test are pressure, gas, and flow volume. The order they are calibrated in does not matter. Calibration requires that these are both measured and then checked against the CPEX guideline preset values. All the calibrated values for each test are recorded in the calibration log. Unless the altitude of the room changes, the pressure in the room will not change very much. Therefore, we only calibrate the pressure once in the morning and once in the afternoon. The default setting for the test is 1000 millibars. The number recorded in the calibration log, however, is the offset from this number. Once the measurement is taken, we check the pressure reading to ensure that it is within the acceptable error range of plus or minus one millibar. We then transfer the offset number to the calibration log. We calibrate the gas before each test. Within the gas analyzer box, there's an oxygen sensor and a carbon dioxide sensor. We perform two gas calibrations. First, we measure the ambient air. Second, we measure the calibration gas of 17% oxygen and 5% carbon dioxide, which approximates exhaled breath. We receive a factor value measurement of the ambient air and calibration gas, and an offset. We then check that the values that the machine records are within acceptable error regions. We check that the oxygen deviation is less than or equal to 0.05, and that the carbon dioxide is less than or equal to 0.02. If the values are in range, we are happy that the gas is calibrated and can transfer the values to the calibration log. We also calibrate flow volume before each test using a 3 liter syringe and a new turbine. Previously, the syringes are externally calibrated to ensure that they represent 3 liters of air. We put air through the syringe at three different flow rates. This shows the flow rate volume over a range of minute ventilations to mirror the different breaths the patient takes over the course of the test. The first flow rate is slow at 0.5 liters per second. Then we test at 1 liter per second and finally at 3 liters per second. The syringe must be pumped three successful times for the measurement to be taken. We then check that the values are within a 0.1 range of error. We then transfer the measurements to the calibration log. The agometer is calibrated externally once a year. It is important to understand the cycle ergometer in relation to other forms of exercise tests that use a treadmill or an arm crank. The peak VO2 is 10% less in a cycle ergometer than a treadmill. The peak VO2 with an arm crank is 40-60% to 60 less than in a treadmill. The cycle ergometer allows us better control of the work the patient does during the test than the treadmill does. It shows a clear ECG reading, makes blood pressure easier to measure, and requires less skill. Two washing bowls should be set up to clean the equipment. One should contain 50 milligrams of Vircon cleaning fluid and 5 liters of water, and the other should have water to rinse the equipment after they have been immersed in the Vircon solution for 10 minutes. When the patient arrives, the exercise physiologist asks him or her to fill out a physical activity questionnaire and a consent form for the UCL CPET database. In addition, the physiologist should get the patient's verbal consent that he or she is happy to proceed with the exercise test. The exercise physiologist will then take the patient's medical and drug history using the UCL CPET data form. If any contraindications to exercise testing arise, the physiologist will contact one of the CPET consultants before deciding whether it is safe to conduct the test. The physiologist measures the patient's height and weight. This information is inputted into the spirometer and test software. If the patient is over 150 kilograms or under 5 feet, the test might not proceed. The physiologist uses a spirometry test to determine the patient's forced vital capacity and forced expiratory volume in one second. 
These values are used to calculate the patient's predicted maximum voluntary ventilation and can help diagnose restrictive or obstructive lung disease. The physiologist measures the hemoglobin concentration in the patient's blood with a hemocue to see if the patient is anemic. If the patient has low hemoglobin levels, then he or she might have reduced capacity of delivering oxygen to the body, which could limit exercise ability. In addition, if a patient's hemoglobin is less than 8, we might speak with the clinical lead before proceeding with the test. If there's no time for transfusion and to reschedule the test, then we might suggest the patient has a blood transfusion before surgery and proceed with the test, remembering that the patient's exercise ability might be limited. The patient's details should be entered into our software, Metasoft. Under defined testing settings, the physiologist should enter the patient's FEV1 measured during the spirometry test, pick the mask size the patient will use, choose an appropriate ramp size, and alter the predicted value settings to Wasserman weight algorithm, heart rate estimation of 220 minus age, and based on predicted VO2. Sit the patient on the ergometer and measure the ambient air. After attaching the saturation probe and blood pressure cuff, take a baseline measurement. Do not begin the test if the patient's heart rate is above 125 beats per minute, systolic blood pressure is over 200, or diastolic blood pressure is above 110 at rest. Attach the 12-lead ECG and the soft rubber mask. Press the blue play button to begin the preliminary recording to check if the ECG is working and looks normal. Check the oxygen values. Is the respiratory exchange ratio between 0.7 and 1? Is the VO2 between 2.5 and 6 milliliters per kilogram per minute at rest? Once you are satisfied with the preliminary recording, press the green play button to begin the test. You should now know why preparations are necessary, how to calibrate the equipment before a test, and what pretest paperwork, information, and measurements are needed before beginning a cardiopulmonary exercise test.